The short video is introducing you to lesson three of Sport and Society Year Two, and it's going to look at the development of elite performers. If you can uh, write your notes up in your blue books and put your title as Development of Elite Performers. So by the end of this video, I'm hoping that you'll all have a <clears throat> better understanding of the factors needed to support progression from the talent ID phase. So from when an athlete's talent is identified all the way to the top of the sporting pyramid to elite performance. And also hopefully you'll be able to describe what the world class performance program is and the key features of it. So think about the sport that you play, what got you into it in the first place. If you think back to the Olympic Games and the Paralympic Games, what got those athletes into swimming, for example, in the first place, um, into equestrian, into canoeing, into rowing, into athletics? What got people into those sports in the first place? And if we have a look here, I'm going to list you some of the social factors that influence how these athletes got into the sport that they then went on to progress and do very well in to climb up that sports development continuum. So the status of the sport has a massive impact. After the Olympics in the summer, you usually see a huge number of people wanting to have a go and take part in things like gymnastics or to have a go and take part in things like athletics. We see numbers increase. It's the same after things like a World Cup. Um, it's the same after things like the Ryder Cup in golf. We see more people wanting to take part in those sports. So the sp status of the sport and the media coverage, is it on TV? Is it, in the social, is it on social media? Is it on the radio? What's the status of that sport? That gets us interested. It makes us want to go and have a go. It might be your school and your university experience. So if you had a teacher at school that was heavily into rugby, it's highly likely that you did lots and lots of rugby at school and maybe that's what gets you into that sport in the first place. Some of you have not gone to university yet, but you might find out you have a sport that you don't even know about yet. So at university, you might experience something like rowing, for example, for the first time, find that you're quite good at it, start entering competitions and start climbing up that sports development continuum. What's your local club network like and your access to clubs? Um, when we had the velodrome built in Manchester uh, for the Commonwealth Games, um, all of a sudden we saw a huge increase, and this will be some of you lot that are listening to this video as well, of people taking up track cycling and BMX cycling. Um, that was because there was access to a, a facility regionally that people could access quite easily, get good quality coaching, and we started to see standards driving up in some of those sports. Your family support is massive, so you rely on your family to pay for your coaching sessions, to buy your equipment, to taxi you around. So your family support is huge. They need to support you to develop in that sport. And then your socioeconomic status. So if you are from a higher socioeconomic status, you will have the money to do all of those things. But if you're from a lower socioeconomic status, that might restrict the sport or the sports activities that you're able to go into. If you don't have as much disposable income, you can't buy the kit, you can't pay for the coaching, you can't drive people around and pay for transport, etc. And also, um, most sports now, well, all sports should have anti-discrimination policies, but how well they are run might dis dictate whether every uh, group is able to access that sport. So if a sport is really good at equality and engaging as many different people as possible, then that might be one of the reasons that you've gone into a specific sport in the first place. So these factors help people on the road to talent identification. To, to get to the top of the pyramid, you need to first of all be participating in it and then performing in that sport. So starting to compete. There's also some physiological and psychological attributes that are necessary to succeed in sport. And quite often when we're looking for developing athletes, we'll look whether they've got the necessary physiological and psychological attributes. Let's start off with some of the physiological ones. So obviously you need a high level of physical fitness. So, you know, genetically, some of you are very lucky to have been born with um, lots of um, slow twitch fibers, a high VO2 max. And if we develop that, you could go on to be a great endurance performer. In terms of psychologically, 
You need to have long term commitment so you don't give up easily. You're determined, you're resilient, you're mentally tough um, and you're disciplined. You know, if you look at those swimmers that were on the slide before, they are disciplined. Some of you lot who are swimmers will get up early every single morning and go and train and then repeat that on evenings as well. You need to be very self-motivated and goal orientated. You need to be able to work towards those short and those long term goals. And you also need to have very high levels of self-confidence. You need to believe you can do it. And if you've got the high technical skill levels, along with that self-confidence and self-belief, you're more likely to succeed. The next thing we're going to look at is UK sport. Now, we're going to look at this in a lot more detail in class, but I'm just going to introduce you to it now. So UK sport is the organisation in the, in the United Kingdom that's responsible for developing elite performers. So UK sport develops elite performers. When you buy your lottery ticket, um, I was going to say on a weekend, but you can buy them whenever now or your lottery scratch card. Some of that money goes to developing sport. It goes to UK sport and UK sport receive that national lottery funding and they invest it into the development of elite Olympic and Paralympic sports. You'll notice year on year, um, you know, since you were born, things have improved massively. Um, but once upon a time, we weren't overly successful on the world stage when it came to the Olympic Games. But now we've, we're up there. We're fighting for those higher positions in the league tables when we look at all the different countries. And that's because UK sport invests lots of money into developing elite Olympic and Paralympic sports. Some of this money is used to run and fund the world class performance pathway. And talent identification pro programs are in place to spot athletes with Olympic medal winning potential and place them onto the world class performance pathway. So while I was preparing this uh, PowerPoint, um, I had a little look on UK sport to see if they were doing any national talent searches at the minute. And they are currently um, running one. I think it's open till the 13th to 14th of October. So you can have a look if you're interested. Uh, but it says, as the nation celebrates Team GB's inspiring performance at the Paris 2024 Olympic Games, winning over 60 medals for the fourth consecutive Games, the search has now begun to find the next generation of UK sporting talent. I've given you a QR code, but UK sport... Are, are, are looking, they've launched a campaign called Find Your Greatness. So write that down in your books, Find Your Greatness campaign. And what they do is they're targeting active and sporty. So this is you lot, 16 to 24 year old UK nationals, including those with physical, visual or intellectual impairments. And the applications are now open until the 14th of October. So if you use that QR code there, you could start your journey to be an athlete at the LA 2028 Games. Um, the campaign at the moment is seeking young athletes for lots of disciplines, including skeleton, cycling, rowing, modern pentathlon, weightlifting, climbing, shooting, volleyball, handball and all para sports. You might not do any of those sports at the minute, but if you go along to some of the talent ID or one of the talent ID days, they'll look to see if you've got what it takes skill wise and uh, fitness wise to develop you to be an elite athlete. So find your greatness. It's been inspired by the Paris Olympic and Paralympic Games. And you can apply um, if you go on the QR code from the previous slide, you can apply to either Team GB or the Paralympic uh, GB. So UK Sport run these national talent searches and also the national governing bodies. So, you know, you've got your national governing bodies of rowing, of weightlifting, um, of all the different disciplines. Um, if the national governing body or the talent ID program spots that you've got some talent, they might put you onto the world class performance pathway. It's run and it's funded by UK Sport. Like I said, the talent ID programs identify athletes with the potential to do well. If they if you're picked, if they identify you as somebody who's got Olympic potential, medal winning potential, you will be placed on the world class performance pathway by your national governing body. 
Any athlete on the world class performance pathway is then supported by the National Institutes of Sport, who will give you as an individual tailored support with sports science, sports medicine, performance lifestyle advice, etc. So finally, let's just have a quick look at the world class performance pathway and we'll review this more in class. If you've shown in those talent ID programmes or on kind of any national governing body um, teams that you're in, that you've got medal winning potential, you can progress through the world class performance pathway. If you look like you've got the potential to win a medal at the next Olympics or Paralympic Games, in other words, a maximum of four years away from the podium, you'll be at the very top of that pyramid and they'll give you lots and lots of support, which we'll talk about in class to hopefully get you to where you need to be to win a medal. If you're not quite there yet, so if you're a bit further away, the world class podium potential supports athletes whose performances suggest that they've got realistic medal winning opportunities, not at the next games, but the one afterwards. So a maximum of eight years away from the podium. And again, you'll be given financial support, coaching support, sports science, sports medicine support, etc. This final slide here is just uh, the, the world class performance programme for judo. So you can see you've got your talent ID and your development squads right at the bottom. And then at the top, we've got the world class performance programme. So we'll have the world class podium and the world class podium potential just below that.